What is bone marrow? Well, inside the bones there's a substantial amount of spongy, flexible tissue. But what's it actually made of? What purpose does it serve? And why is it actually located inside the bones themselves? Well, the bone marrow is actually made from two different types of tissue. We're divided into yellow and red marrow. All the marrow has a good blood supply, despite it being located inside the bones themselves. The interior of the bones makes a safe, stable environment where various different processes can take place. Yellow marrow has that colour because there are large amounts of fat cells within it. This marrow can produce additional fat, bone and cartilage. It acts as a store of fat in times of need to supply the body with additional energy. So when a baby is born, all the bone marrow is actually red. As the body matures, the inner core of the bones, especially those of the longer bones, the body gradually replaces the red marrow with yellow. When the body is middle-aged, around half the bone marrow is now yellow. Although, if the body does undergo some form of trauma requiring the need for additional red bone marrow, this process can be reversed, converting the yellow marrow back into red. The red bone marrow, not surprisingly, gets its colour from red blood cells. The marrow forms key functions are related to blood and it produces red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. The blood vessels that keep the marrow supplied also prevent immature cells from entering into the bloodstream until they're actually ready to perform their normal duties. It's this key role in producing the elements of the blood that make the marrow critical in a healthy body. And by distributing production around the body rather than a single organ, and locating production inside the protective environment of the bones ensures that it's unlikely that production can be completely shut down. However, like with all body systems, bone marrow can be vulnerable under circumstances, either to disease or environmental contamination. These include bone cancer or leukemia, aplastic anemia, and tuberculosis or TB. It's sometimes why a bone marrow transplant can be the key to saving somebody's life. It's where stem cells are located in the red marrow are the keys for producing new cells. They're removed from the donor patient and implanted or grafted into the recipient. The treatment's normally conducted once the underlying cause of the disease has been either cured or is in remission. Originally taking the bone marrow out of bones was the only way for this to be done. This could be painful for the donor and required a general anaesthetic. However, it's now possible to force some of the cells out of the bone marrow, enabling them to be collected from the bloodstream itself. Alternatively, required cells can be harvested from the placenta or the umbilical cord. It's even possible sometimes to store the patient's own stem cells before the treatment and then re-implant their own cells back into the body once the eradication of the disease is complete. Really remarkable to think that all these processes going on inside what is normally think thought of as inactive solid bones, and yet without it we wouldn't be able to survive.